Hey everyone, Eric here. In today's Skill Builder, I'm going to share with you my process for setting up scenes and styles that can then be exported for further editing or post-processing in a program such as Photoshop. So for those of you that are familiar with rendering programs, like such as V-Ray, you might already be familiar with the terms render channels or render elements. These are basically the rendering program breaking out different pieces of information from the model into their own images, so that then later you can recombine them and then edit each individually. So we don't actually need a rendering program like V-Ray to do that. We can actually do that right here in SketchUp using native tools, just by setting up, by pre-thinking, and setting up some scenes and styles to work together. So let's go ahead and do it. I've got my model here. I've got my default view set up. And you can see I've got everything turned on. I've got edges. I've got shadows. I've got my entourage and everything. So I'm going to click on my default view. And you can see it resets. Everything's back on. So from here, I want to let's think about it. It doesn't really matter the order that we go in. We want to break all of the things in this view out so that we can then control them individually. So we have edges. We have textures. We have shadows, and then we're going to do one more layer on top of it, which is going to help with selecting things later when we get into Photoshop. So let's start by expanding our Styles panel. And you can see I've got some styles in there, but let's go ahead and purge them just to make sure that we're starting fresh and clean. We've got just our default style. I want to come over to Edit, and let's just turn the edges off. So let's make this first scene just textures, profiles and edges off. I'm going to go pretty quick here because you're going to see that we're going to repeat this process a few times. Shadows off as well. And I'm going to go ahead and create a new style and create a new scene. Change the name of that, call it texture or texture, doesn't really matter. And that one's done, first one's done. So what I want to do here too is hopefully I have time at the end. I want to open up my scenes panel and for just not my default view, but for all these render channels I'm setting up, I actually want to uncheck camera location. And you're going to see why at the end. If, if we do this right, we can actually save this as a template. And then I'll show you how it works if I load in a new model. So let's go ahead and for now, I'll close that. And just keep in mind that all of the render channels will not have camera location checked, only our default view. So that's done intentionally. So this next one, we just turned our edges off. Let's actually do the opposite. Let's turn our edges on and our textures off. Now we can just go to hidden line style. That's pretty easy. But what I'm going to want to do is make sure edges and profiles are on. And for this one, I just want it all white. I don't want that sky there. So I'm going to turn sky off, create a new uh, style and a new scene. We're going to call this one edges. And the next thing we want to do is shadows. So I'm going to turn my shadows back on. And in my scene, sorry, not my scenes, my styles, I'm going to make sure that I'm editing them. Go to Edges, turn those off. I want only my shadows showing. And I'm going to create a new style for that. Now, before I save this to a scene, I'm actually going to open up my shadow settings. And by default, I like my shadows nice and light. But when I go to select them later, I kind of want more contrast between the background. So I'm just going to pull this slider where it says dark. I'm just going to pull that all the way down. And now it's going to be easier for me to select those if I wanted to separate them from the white background. So I'll close that. And now I can actually go ahead and say, add that scene, rename that, call it shadows. And that's it. Let's toggle through those really quick. We've got edges, textures, and default view. That's just sort of our base view. Everything's on. So if I rotate this, let's see if it worked here. If my camera location trick worked, I should hit textures. Great. Edges, perfect. Shadows, all right, that's what I want. So I'm going to start back in my default view. And then, of course, I'm going to go ahead and reset that camera angle and back to shadows because that's the last scene in my sequence. The next thing I want to do is create that material ID channel. So if you've heard the term matte ID or render ID, I want to basically create a colored version of this with each object separated so that when I select something, it'll 
it'll help me. So I'll, I'll show you that at, towards the end. Shadows off, textures on for this. Tags panel open, or you can do this within the styles panel if you wanted to. You can find color by you can find color by tag here, or you can find it here. So I want to make sure my color by tag style is on. And then the same, well, it's not the same, but the sort of the opposite of what we just did for the shadows. We made them really dark so that they popped out. In this case, I want to actually make the lightness slider dark, and I want to pull my darkness slider all the way up for this scene or for this style anyway. So the reason for doing that is now you can see that I've got these solid colors. So that's going to make for really easy selections when I'm in Photoshop. Say I want to make changes to these rocks. I can just select the yellow rocks. It's easy. I don't have to worry about um, the textures or the shadows or anything getting in the way. So I'm going to go ahead and add that as a new style. And of course, as before, add it as a scene and change the name. So I call this CBT, and the reason why is because it's short for color by tag. That's just how I remember it. So just a note on color by tag that if you get a lot of these colors, if they end up being the same, you just want to make sure that you take some time to switch them. Like, for example, if the frame that goes around the structure was the exact same color as the walls, you're going to see that when you go to select the walls, you're going to select the frame as well. So if by chance, when you set this up or by default, if it's using the same color for these, take a few minutes and just go in and make sure that you're using just a different color for each one. Doesn't matter what the colors are, it can be totally random. And of course, if you find that you see like my person here, if she was uh, in front of my rocks and I wanted her separate, I might actually make the effort to create a new tag just for her. But because she's off to the side over here, I left her on an entourage tag because then I can select her individually. So it all just depends on your view and the level of control that you want. So I'm going to close these here. So the next trick is to export these out so that we can edit them in Photoshop. Now we can go, obviously, go up to File, Export 2D Graphic. I think that's what most of us would do. But because we have multiple scenes set up, we can actually export them as an animation. So I'm going to do that. Just a note here, I also have my scene transitions turned off. So that when you check your options, you can see that one frame per second, that means one frame per scene because there's no transitions. So just kind of keep that in mind. If you have transitions, you're going to get multiple frames per scene. Uh, so you might want to go back and change that. So I'll just hit Export. And you can see it's exporting them all at the same time I'm going to open up my Finder window, and you can see they're all exporting. I don't have to go back in and do that over and over again. So that's great. So if I want to, I can just select these, drag them all into Photoshop, which I actually have a file set up already. So let's take a quick look at that. So you can see I've got my textures, I've got my sky, I've got even my shadows, my edges, and my color by tag layer. So I'm going to turn these shadows off because I already used the shadow by itself. I use those to change the color of the shadows because I like there to be a little pop of color in those. So sometimes I'll select the shadow color and then I'll just replace it with a different color, something, uh, something with a little bit more pizzazz, I guess. Same thing for the rocks. I wanted to make them go from gray to brown. So I just use my color by tag, come over here, use magic wands, Make sure I'm on the color by tag, select, select, select. And that made for really quick color edits. Let's just do one more together. And it, what's cool about this is that you don't even need the color by tag layer on. If I tried to select this texture myself, you can see that depending on your tolerance, I'm getting, it's trying to get the different colors within that material on the ground plane. So if I select my color by tag layer or export, then click that, you can see what's happening here is that it just selects everything instantly. That's great. So whether or not the layer is turned on or off, you can still do that. And then just for fun, I'm going to go ahead and darken. I can either lighten my ground plane a little bit or darken it, depending on what my mood is, what I'm feeling um, works for this view. So let's pump back into SketchUp. I want to wrap up by saying one thing here is that if you felt like this was a lot of work to do, uh, to set up the scenes, to set up the styles, well, maybe, but if you use the same tags for all of your files, or if you work for a firm and you have a tag or a layer structure, 
then you don't have to do this over and over again every time. In fact, if I just select everything in this model, I'll just take it out and then I'm going to go File and I'm going to say Save it as a template right there. Just missed it. Save it as a template. I'm going to call this Post Processing, but call it whatever you want, Compositing, Rendering, whatever. And I'm going to say, I don't want that as my default template. I'm going to say save it. So what it's going to do, it's going to close that. It's going to open it back up. So, okay, so now I'm in this. So let's go ahead and just import. I'm going to come down here, import. I've got another file that I'm working on. It's here on my desktop. So if I find it, it's my cabin, my V-Ray cabin. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this V-Ray cabin in. And then all I need to do here is basically set. All I need to do is set that default view. So let's say that's my default view. Come up here, update that. And because I unchecked camera location, all of the other views that I just exported or that we just set up in the previous example, they all still stay. Um, so of course, you can always adjust the shadow angle if you want. You can always change the colors in your CBT if you want. You'll notice I'm using the same nomenclature or the same tags as I did before. And of course, it works great. So again, even if you wanted to export more than one view, all you would have to do is just turn this, pick a different view. Once you get that view, of course, when you go down through your render channels, it's going to stay the same. It's going to remember that whatever that default view is that you saved. So that's it for my quick tips or my process for setting up render channels for exporting. I will plug our SketchUp Campus right now. Give me a second. I'm going to pull it up just so it's visual. We do have a course right here behind me, behind me um, on rendering SketchUp to Photoshop. So if you want to learn more, head over to learn.sketchup.com and enroll for free. And you'll get a much kind of slower, uh, more explanations, more examples. And of course, you'll get some example files to follow along with as well. So if you liked anything you saw here, not only do what we want you to do all the time, which is comment, like, subscribe, but also check out some of our other learning content on learn.sketchup.com. And as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.